Welcome to Whiskey Night Caps, the channel where we do sip before sleep, and I am your host, Jason Davis. And today, get your passports ready because we're going back to Ireland. That's, that's not a proper Irish accent, are they? Oh, it's a wee bit of Ireland. That, that sounds a little bit better. We're going to Ireland, man, you get it. But before we do that, please, please make sure you go ahead right now, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and hit the like button because the algorithms are hating on your boy. Let's do this. All right, so welcome back. I'm glad to have you all with me. And today we have on the chopping block, Writer's Tears Copper Pot Whiskey. Okay, so Writer's Tears comes from Walsh Whiskey, straight out of Ireland, not straight out of Compton, okay? Walsh Whiskey was founded in 1999 by a married duo of Bernard and Rose Marie Walsh. As far as I know, they only have two mash bills or two whiskeys that they offer, which is the Writer's Tears line and then also the Irishman line. And I say line because there's different variations on those two whiskeys like Double Oak, Sherry Cask Mature and Cask Strength. Now this particular whiskey is referred to as the Dram of Dreamers. I really like that name, that's, that's super catchy. I saw that on their website. Ah, marketing genius to say the least. Now this one is a blend of pot still, aged pot still whiskey and single grain malt whiskey. So there's a little bit of that malted and unmalted barley in the mash bill and then it's matured in ex bourbon cast. Now, uh, they don't really say whether or not it's first fill or second fill American bourbon cast that's used, but it should give it some type of influence on the whiskey. Now, this is one I remember picking up from the store and you know, I'm, I'm a cheap dude. So if, if I bought it cash, uh, it probably is a uh, value whiskey. And when I say value for me, right, that's anywhere from like 30 to 50 bucks. I do own some whiskeys that are more than that, right? I, I've made some silly purchases in my time because uh, sometimes quality is worth the money. But if I recall correctly, this is around 30, 35 bucks in this market. Now it's only 40% ABV and, and I hear some of you screaming out there at the top of your lungs because all you drink is cask strength and good for you. However, some of us like a variety of different whiskeys in our collection. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's a whiskey for every time and place. Sometimes you want something that's 66% ABV. Maybe you had a hard week, but sometimes you just want to chill, man. Just sit back, relax, sip something neat without really, you know, having somebody pick you up off the floor later. And this is one of those whiskeys. All right, so let's take a look at the color on this sucker. You know, it has a, a nice, really bright, crisp and clear. Uh, it's not yet amber, it's, it's almost like a, like a beer color, like a light, pale color. Very beautiful. I don't believe this is chill filtered, by the way, but I, I would never know because I do not put ice in my whiskey, ever. All right, so let's get to the nose. Let's get to the nose. You know, the malt really jumps right out at you. So immediately you get hit with the fruity notes, that pear and, and, and apple, slight bit of ethanol, but, but not a lot. And because it's 40%, you know, I can get in closer with this sucker to really, really inhale in with these nostrils, these huge nostrils. Uh, to get as much on the nose as possible. And the further I get down in there, there's a, a faint spice, but it's very hard to, to pick up. All right, so cheers, salud, slancha, and whatever other language they use. Very sweet. On the palate, I actually got some vanilla, like right off the bat. The apple and pear that was on the nose translates to the palate. And I love when the nose translates to the palate because otherwise for me, it's like false advertisement, baby. On the finish, it's a little bit of that spice, a little bit of that spice. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for one more second and then we'll come back and we'll nose a second time and then we'll also go on the palate a second time and we'll give the final judgment on this Irish whiskey. Is it the luck of the Irish?
All right, and we're back. We've been letting this sucker sit for a little while. Let's go back in. Let's see if things have changed, if there's any variation to what we perceived on the first go round. That spice is starting to come out a little bit more pronounced. It's, it's, it's very barrel-like. You can tell this is the barrel spice that you know possibly is coming from those bourbon casks. The fruit is still there, but it is mingled and mixed in with that spice. Let's go in for a second one. I like that. I really like that. This time, in addition to what I picked up on the first, that spice is transforming into a black pepper like spice. You know, I was trying to figure it out because it wasn't like a cayenne type spice, but more like a cracked pepper. You know, black pepper is not really hot or, or, or spicy in the terms of what I think about when I think about spicy, because I eat some hot shit sometimes. But it lends flavor, it lends character to it. You wouldn't want to drink something that was just totally sweet, right? That would just, some people are just not into that, especially with their whiskeys. They're just not into sweet whiskeys. Now me, myself, and I, I don't mind a sweet whiskey. However, having that complexity to it, those layers of vanilla, and then a little bit of the fruit, and then that spice, makes it awesome. Now it does have a long finish. I still feel that going down. And on that finish this time, there was a little bit of nuttiness there. There was a little bit of nuttiness. The mouthfeel of it is, is creamy, it's silky, it's beautiful. And especially for the price point, you really can't beat it. So if you like Irish whiskeys, and maybe the only thing you do is red breast. All you do is red breast 12, right? Step outside of that for a second. Now, I do also have upstairs Tullamore Dew 12. And I have to say, this beats that hands down. I, I really, I'm really not a fan of Tullamore Dew 12. I, you know, I haven't tried the other expressions, um, but if I had cash in my hand and the only two choices uh, in that Irish category is the Tullamore and the Writer's Tears, this is getting picked up each time immediately. And just comparing it to not just, you know, Tullamore Dew, but just whiskeys in general, it's just a good, value it's, it's a good quality whiskey hats off I'm not, I'm not taking this hat off right now because of what's under here but hats off to the Walsh family I hope they continue to do great things and at some point I hope I get a chance to uh, try the Irishman out or maybe the cash strength version of writer's tear in my book this is a go this is going on that checklist of whiskeys that you should purchase and try out. And if you've had this, please tell me down below. What's your favorite Irish whiskey? You know, tell me down below. All right, so once again, I just wanna thank you all for riding it out with your boy. Like I said, and I'm gonna keep repeating it, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button because what? The algorithms are hating on your boy? Yes, that is correct. All right, man, Whiskey Nightcaps, Jason Davis, out. I got something special for you on the next go round. Welcome to 2021, baby. That's really good. That is really, really good. All right, I had to come back just for one second. I just realized I reviewed a whiskey called Writer's Tears and didn't even mention that I'm a writer myself and this is a fitting whiskey for me, I'm gonna go ahead and link my book in the description down below. If you like true crime, orange is the new black, those type of books and movies or whatever, go ahead and check this out. It's real life experience, a memoir based on my true life. All right, let's go. Now you can leave, you, you can leave now.